Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Dead Malls, your one-stop shop for any and all malls. And welcome everyone to our last visit here on day two. Welcome to Dort Mall, or Small Mall, or Mid-America Plaza, whatever you want to call it. Today we have it very short and brief, as this is probably one of the smallest malls I've ever explored, but it in itself has a pretty fascinating story of strange tenets, antiques, and 60s skylights. And at the very end, we'll be heading up north to take a look at a very vintage, abandoned Kmart. So stick around for that too. Before we get started with today's episode, I'd like to shout out our two winners who were able to successfully guess the next mall. Very nice job, Mall and Retail Legend, and Exploring Retails with Andrew. If you want to have your chance of being shouted out in the next episode, stick around for the next challenge. Anyways, let's get in here, see the sights, tell the story of Dort Mall, and see how it's doing as of July of 2022. Dort Mall's story begins long before the other two malls, and to go back to the beginning, we have to rewind the clock back to 1946, August 29th to be exact. The soldiers were sitting in their cars with their recently reunited wives, watching It's a Wonderful Life on the big screen of the Dort Drive-In Theater, which had just opened. World War II had just ended, and there was peace, for their safety and for their new lives in the prosperous city of Flint, Michigan. The Dort Drive-In would thrive as the city's first drive-in theater. Soon more would open, and in the early 60s, the old drive-in just wasn't like it was in the good old days. By the 60s, those vets and the many, many more residents now primarily worked in the assembly factories, and local developer William Olickson looked to build a place for them all to be together after a long workday, a shopping center that would ultimately unite middle-class Flint. Right down these stairs would have been the old nightclub, which we'll get to in the history, and I just wonder if, if you went down there, with the untouched state of the rest of the mall, if there would still be the old dance floors and tables and bar and whatnot. And as you can hear in the mall, it's just brimming with birds, and they are up and about in the rafters up there, so see if you can spot any of them, because they are everywhere. In 1964, William would acquire the land of the old Dort Drive-In, and would tear it down shortly after. His plans called for a brand new shopping mall on the site, and soon construction would begin. The mall would be small, as in the 60s, malls weren't all about size, but about the park-like community atmosphere, and it would be anchored by an A&P grocery store on the north side, and a Yankee Stadium on the south. 
which was a discount department store based in Flint. In the mall concourse lie almost 300,000 square feet of space. Dort Mall would officially open in 1965, predating Cortland and Genesee, and be the first enclosed shopping mall in the city of Flint, with the name Dort deriving from the late and great GM pioneer Josiah Dallas Dort, who was a native of the city. In its early years, Dort Mall would flourish. In 1968, a brand new General Cinema would open right out back behind the mall, furthering its success. However, it was still small, and by the 70s, with the opening of Eastland and Genesee Valley Center, both massive regional malls, Dort didn't really have a shot. In 1974, Yankee Stadium would leave after the company went bankrupt, and just a year later in 1975, the cinema would be expanded to two screens, however, would close for good in 1983. It actually still sits abandoned right behind the mall to this day, with the old cinema sign still up. In the late 70s, a nightclub called The Light would open in the basement of the mall, however, that too would close by the 80s. Despite the additions of nightclubs and brief theater expansions, the mall was still largely empty, and it would go that way for several more years. So, one comment that I got that, that was sort of reciprocated through every picture I posted of Dort Mall was that it looked either like a church or a school. And honestly, I'm gonna have to lean more towards a school. I mean, look at those wooden ceiling rafters. Slap a wooden floor down and you could totally convince me that this was an old gym. If the whole mall idea doesn't work out, you could probably even turn it into one, with little work necessary. Just a thought. <laughs> Through the 80s, the mall would go through a handful of different names. Small Mall, Mid-America Plaza, but it always land right back at Dort Mall, so it stuck. By the early 90s, a Sears Hardware and a Comedy Club would open, however, both would leave soon after. It was also in the 90s that the old AMP, which had closed years prior, would become a big lots. Throughout the 2000s, not much would happen. Nothing could really close because there just wasn't a whole lot going on. While the city suffered immensely with the closings of assemblies and plants, Dort Mall would sort of stagnate. At some point, local hockey player Bob Perenni would buy the mall as he would begin his hockey monopoly out of the mall, opening training areas, a pizza business, and even the Perenni's Hockey World sports store. Big Lots would close in 2012 and be replaced with a flea market, and while the other malls struggled through closure, Dort Mall didn't really have to worry about much of that. The mall was locally owned by Perani and was so small and had such a good cycle of small discount businesses that it never feared closure. The mid-2010s would even see Bob hang up and strew about the halls as dozens of antiques and collectibles. So it was always to the locals and traveling tourists such as myself, more of a museum. So after getting past some rather upset guests who were setting up a wrestling tournament, I was able to get a nice view of this old lifeboat, which is one of the only few antiques left. Most of the others have been sold off over the years, so sadly there's not much left to see. Bob would pass away in 2012, so I'm not 100% sure if his family owns the mall now or what. 
As of my visit in July of 2022, Doric Mall sits almost exactly as it has been for years, decades even, just quiet, empty, full of birds and a rich past. While Dort Mall may have never been the lifetime shopping destination William wanted it to be, it was still a great community place, and still is to this day. And maybe that's okay. Maybe Dort Mall was always meant to be this community hub. While I drive around the exterior here, I was putting in Google Maps the site of a former bargain superstore, an old Kmart, long abandoned for decades. And while I didn't go in, it was still a fascinating site, so let's hit the road and head over there real quick. Choose from a beautiful collection of colorful coordinates and save one third during the match made in season sale through Saturday at Kmart. So this Kmart store, number unknown, sits on the far reaches of the north side of Flint. Its surroundings are a school to the south, forests to the north and west, and a decently busy road to the east. And there's not much known about this location except for a few things. It was also, similar to Dort Mall, the site of a drive-in, Flint North, which operated on the site from 1948 to 1966, in its life surviving the deadly Flint EF5, which killed 116 and injured hundreds of others. By the late 60s, the growing Kmart brand would raise the site, building a brand new store, and over the years, this Kmart would serve North Flint as one of the only large retail options in the area. It would gain a garden center, Circle K grocery, auto center, and even a Little Caesars pizza station, all of which still have visible label scars today. It would also never be renovated, as the giant neon letters still have label scars to this day. In 1997, in restructuring, this location would close permanently. Over the years, it was an undesirable site, never again to be redeveloped or built on. It would be the scene of vandalism to the most extreme degree, a fire in the mid-2000s, and today, it just sits abandoned, long forgotten as nature takes it back. So, as much as I wanted to go in, I didn't dare try, as it was just too sketchy. You can't hear it in my footage, but there were dogs barking inside, and I believe that there just had to be some sort of illegal dog breeding going on. Plus, I got pulled in the parking lot, so I had to leave. But how long will this old Kmart, once America's prime shopping place, sit abandoned like this? Let me know down below. Guys, I want to thank you so much for watching today's episode. Dort Mall was such a fun mall to visit, and while I didn't get to see as many knickknacks as I was hoping to, I was still happy with what I got. If any of you are ever in the area, stop by Dort Mall and shop some of the local places. If you guys enjoy my Dead Mall content, consider subscribing so you don't miss out on future Dead Malls episodes, and head over to the Patreon to support me for a monthly Dead Mall Polaroid taken and signed by me. Next week as we begin day three, we'll be taking it to the Tri-Cities to check out a mall in the southern city on the north side of town. Guess which mall we'll be at and I'll shut you out in the next episode. Anyways, until then, have yourselves a lovely day and peace out guys, see you later.